later on today, I'm really looking forward to interviewing Tony Cotty for our Patreon channel. Now, don't worry, you won't miss out. I'll take a little bit of it, a snippet, a teaser, and put it on this channel tomorrow. If you want to watch the whole lot, you're going to have to join Patreon. I'll give you the, uh, all the details another time, but start of the month is the best time to join. Today's video is a transfer rumours one. I've not really done it. I think a generic transfer rumours one for quite a while. <laughs> I think I, I tend to do them when they're needed, if you know what I mean. Um, there's been big topics and a lot of gossip going around, but we appear to be approaching a phase of the season, for reasons that I gave in yesterday's video, which are quite crucial. Now, I think the, the first thing I'm really pleased about to hear is that we are still in for Anana, who is, of course, the Lille midfielder. Now, as I understand it, there's about a £10 million disparity in what we're offering and what the French club want. That being said, there doesn't seem to be an awful lot of competition for his signature. You've actually got to go back, I find, a little while, about a, about six months to a year, to find teams that he is linked with, and Liverpool are one of them. Now, I think what, what happens is people sort of rehash old stories and sort of try and apply them to now. I think certainly the agent and certainly the club itself would like Everybody would well, like West Ham to think that there's a bid in war uh, with Liverpool, but there hasn't been. Let's be fair, it's all gone quiet on that story for the last two or three weeks while we've been trying to tie up the Skamaka deal, and nothing's happened. No one's swooped in and bought him. And I'll tell you why I think that is, because I think their price is prohibitively high. Uh, I don't think he's, he's not done an awful lot in the game yet. However, I don't think that's a reason not to buy him. In fact, I said this about a few players you get one chance to buy this sort of player. And now is our chance. You won't get him in two years' time. You just won't. Now's the time to get him. And he's probably, even though it is, does seem like quite an expensive amount to pay, There's, he's, he's not going to get any cheaper, is he, over time? Let's be perfectly honest. And I do think we need to try and do this now. For all the reasons that I said in yesterday's video, which is this player adds dynamism to the midfield, and I think we really seem to be lacking it. It was interesting, actually, to hear Vladimir Souval's comments to call us leggy, call West Ham leggy. But well, actually, we do uh, we do seem leggy. Look, I, I am aware you probably tune into these videos every day, and probably not a video goes past. I'm like Uncle Albert mentioning the war on Only Fools and Horses, and, and not a video goes past where I won't mention the lack of pace in the team. But we've got a lack of pace in the team, and uh, I think this guy would really help it in that midfield, that central midfield area. Although um, we are lacking that in wide areas as well. Now, oh, I mean, I, I'm putting my hands to my body language tells you everything already. It's Kostic. That, that's why That's why my body language went. I, I thought it was over, but it appears. So here's the latest story. I think this is um, an ex, uh, ex West Ham United employee update who said that we're going to wait for another couple of days. Oh, it's not blaming his fault. Uh, he's just uh, delivering the news that he's got. But we're going to wait for a couple of days uh, to see if he can be persuaded. Now, I'm not going to go through all the reasons why we shouldn't persuade him. I did a whole video on that the other day about players, about trying to persuade players that, that don't want to come. Um, anyway, it appears that the move to a Champions League club has not materialised. So we're not battling with anybody else. So there was talk about Juventus. He ain't going to Juventus, apparently. Now... Obviously, he is already at a Champions League club, isn't he, in Frankfurt. So now we're trying to offer him more and more money. Now, um, I've given my reasoning for not doing that. I think the thing I don't like about the, the recent development in the in the plot line, I was going to call it the story, let's call it the plot line, is the fact we're going to wait another couple of days. I don't think we should. I don't think we have them. I am well prepared to be proved wrong on this. More than happy to be proved wrong. I was sort of half expecting with um, with the Lingard. That I keep mentioning. I used to. I started saying he who should not be named. I guess I started naming him again. I often thought with the Lingard one, David Moyes will look pretty. I don't mean he'd ever be cocky. Moyes is not cocky like that. But I think he'd look quite cocksure. And if he if he'd have got his man, come the end of it. Moisey could have turned around and said, see, this is what patience does. I was patient. Eventually, I got Lingard and got him on a free. This is what happens when you are patient and you persevere. Well, obviously, that didn't happen. So, actually, he was proved wrong. Uh, but, And I'm, I'm more than happy to be proved wrong on this. But I do wonder if Moisey's looking at this thinking, let's give it another couple of days. Now, um, there was actually one of the articles, funny enough, I was reading the money articles in the One Football app, which, which I'll... Which I'll plug in a second, funny enough. And in that, he was saying, David Moyes, David Moyes was David Moyes was apparently sort of half-quoted as trying to use the agent and use the relationship we've got with the agent, who's also Skamaka's agent, 
to try and push this deal through. Hey, hey look, who am I kidding? This, this is the one football part of the show with the link in the description below and the QR code up there. But there's a lot of stories on the one football app today, and, and this one I'm particularly talking about was was really sort of playing up the importance of the relationship between um, Kostic's agent, who's also Skamaka's agent, the fact that we've already done business with him. He's got a good relationship with Moyes. He's got a good relationship with Newman. Um, this might help. We're basically relying on the agent to persuade the player to come to us. Apparently, we feel, according to this one football web article, link is in the description below, that the player is on our side. The, sorry, the agent is on our side and can persuade the player. Sounds a bit tenuous, doesn't it? Anyway, if you want to read more on that, the link is in the description below to One Football app. The One Football app is free, by the way. There's a load of West Ham stories on there. If you're going to download it for the first time, it takes 15 seconds. Tell it at the start you support West Ham. Chucks all the West Ham stories together for you. Um, so, that I mean, I'm a little bit concerned about that because it does have a, a sort of Groundhog Day feel to it, really, doesn't it? Now, the other thing that... I think was uh, somebody mentioned, not sure, I'm not sure whether this was on the One Football app or in this update or whatever, was the name Grimaldo. Now, I really like this player. This player's a good player. It's very, very infrequently do we get linked with a player um, from overseas, and I can tell you a little bit about him. In fact, the next player I'm going to talk about, the guy at PSG, I know nothing about. But Grimaldo, I know. Grimaldo, I know. This is a really, really good player. And in fact... I think, I think it. I'm almost. I'd almost be tempted. I think he might be better for West Ham than uh, Kostic would. Um, as Gio alluded to in his video yesterday, Kostic sort of requires a change in formation, doesn't he? Uh, for us to be playing almost three at the back quite a lot, so he can play a uh, wing back. Um, Grimaldo's a really good player, and I just do wonder if we shouldn't be dilly dallying and waiting another two or three days to see if the agent can persuade Kostic to sign. Uh, for us, I know a few people are worried about the age. I'm less worried about the age. Look, Skamaka's young, Flynn Downs is young. If we're going to sign an Anna as well, he's only 20. I mean, you know, a, a, you know, a couple of experienced players chucked in there is absolutely fine. You know, that's I've got no problem with that at all. Um, particularly if it's going to be a relatively low fee, and you're talking about 16, 17 million. I mean, that that ain't bad. Let's be fair. He's all about the quality, this guy, and and he's probably going to be playing to a pretty damn high standard up until you know into age 32 or 33, something like that, to get a player for four years or something like that, 16 million transfer, it ain't that pricey, it ain't that expensive really, you could spend more than that on loan fees over a four year period, I'll tell you that much. Um, the other guy, now who I didn't know, and I've got to put this on there now, let me just, uh, okay, he plays for PSG, his name is Arno uh, Kalimwendo, I think, Kalimwendo, Ar Arno Kalimwendo, um, don't know anything about him at all. Highly rated Paris Saint-Germain um, young player. Was out on loan uh, last season, apparently did uh, really well. Now, did, again, this was under one football app, but I do believe the article, they've sort of pinched it from a, a website called Court Offside. Um, he's a striker, apparently. Um, he's Again, he's only 20 years of age. Uh, he was on loan last season and I believe he scored 12 goals um 12 goals it's goals in London spell last season um look, I don't I don't know I don't know how true this is I'd be very very surprised if we were I think this is one of those easy easy links I'd like to think we were going to sign a third striker but um, and I am classing Antonio as a striker. I, I am. Uh, I'd like to think we'd sign a third one. I just can't see it. There are, as I described yesterday, there are other areas of the pitch that we definitely should be looking at, other than um, I think a third striker. Uh, certainly, I. It's quite funny actually when I look at the look at the players we've been linked with on the left. Um, I, you know, you may argue that we need a left winger more. I, I, I could argue we need a left left back more or, or whatever. It does appear that the players we're being linked with fall between the margins are left wing backs um, or have the ability to play that way. And, um, you know, I know Gio certainly conveyed this in his, in his video yesterday uh, that he's a little bit nervous about the um, about us switching formation. And so am I because I just, I've yet to be convinced with us playing that particular formation. Um I do believe, though, that if we did get this left-sided player, whoever it is, let's say it's Kostic, let's say it doesn't happen and we've got someone like Grimaldo, I know people like Maxwell Cornet, um, if we did get one of those, let's call him a lefty, right, whether it's a winger or a full-back or a wing-back, if we did get a lefty 
and we did get Anana and managed to get both of those players. I think it'd be serious intent from this transfer window. It would be a case of David Moyes. I would say, look, there you go. That's what I've been saving up the money for. I think we spent 80 million so far. If we went and did something like that, then we'd be looking at maybe we'd have spent 130, 140 million. And I do think you could then look and say, actually, we have improved significant areas of the team. Um, I think these two transfers, if they happen, turn an OK transfer window a reasonable transfer window into an exceptional one. Um, but we need to do it. I'll tell you what, it is looming. It is looming fast. Only yesterday I said it's a week until we kick off the season against Manchester City. It's six days now and um, we need to get another player signed up soon, which is what makes me really worried when I read these reports that David Moyes is going to wait another couple of days just to see if Kostic can be persuaded. I think we were quite lucky in the way that I guess Gamaka and his agent and the club allowed us to to drag our feet a little bit and wait for the, the definitive no from Chelsea about Breuer. Uh, I'm not sure everyone else likes you to do that. Sometimes you miss out on your second choice target and Skamaka was our second choice target. I hope he turns out to be better than Breuer, obviously. Um, but that doesn't always happen. I just wonder if whatever it's Grimaldo or Corne or someone like that, in those couple of days that we're waiting uh, to try and to basically try and get the Costage deal over the line, those two get itchy feet, or maybe they just get signed by other clubs. Um, dangerous game, dangerous game. Um, anyway, let's see what happens.